Hey everybody, welcome to PC Studios. How are you doing today? So listen, I've got a little bit of an echo. If anybody out there has an echo, I'm doing stuff in uh, where I set up my office at the home. So if you're having an echo, can you write it in real quick? Just want to make sure that everything, since I've changed location, I want to make sure everything is going okay. Anybody have an echo and everything good? Okay, then we're going to keep going. I think maybe if I bring in the microphone, that'll make a little bit of a difference. So good. All right. So thanks, Melissa. I see that we did not have an, have an echo, so we're going to keep going with what we got. So how are you doing today? I hope everybody's doing okay. Today is July 20th, 2020. Listen, this day in 1988, I went to basic training. Can you believe that? This day, July 20th, 1988, I went to basic training. Man, it's been a long time. Uh, so glad I'm not there now. Fort Knox, Kentucky. Also, this day is the day of my father's birthday. So I just, my dad will never see this. Um, this is not his thing. And dad's kind of kind of kept to himself here. But I just want to say, dad, I love you and a happy birthday to you. Um, I'll call you here later on. I know that, again, I know that my dad's never going to see this, but I just want him to know that happy birthday and uh, just thinking about you, Dad. So with that, um, let's go to our prayers, cares, and shares. I've just shared a few things with you, right? So you you can have this moment, too. To We want to have an audience that interacts so you can have this opportunity to do the same thing right now where you are. So I want to encourage you to do that. So if there's some things that you need to share, uh, some things that you you know that are on your heart, please do that right now. And I like that. Yes, Fred, Hepler, and Sandy, we are all better than we deserve. It can always be a little bit worse, can't it? But I know that some of us may have some serious stuff that's going on in our lives that we need to share. So if you need to do that, please take the time to do that now. So, hey, everybody. Um, just let's continue to pray for our nation and pray for the church at large. Last night, um, I know Greg maybe will be putting out the video here, I'm sure soon, and we'll put it on YouTube from last night. My phone acted up on the live stream, but we need to pray like never before, 2 Chronicles 7 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, right? will turn from their wicked ways, their evil ways. He's talking to us, you all. If my people will do that, right, and seek my face, then I'll hear them from, I'll hear their prayers from heaven, I'll forgive them of their sins, and I'll heal their land. So I know we, we use that, but that's what I preached on last night. And I do believe we're under God's judgment, the world. And judgments, I believe God uses. They're not wrath. They're not punishment necessarily. But judgments are ways that God gets our attendance. I believe the virus, the violence, and all that stuff. So I'm not going to go back into my sermon, but I just want you to think about those things. And we need to be praying. So I want us to pray today for those things. Yeah, let's see. So yes, praise God, Doreen, that your lens cover was found, and I got to give it to you last night. Um, thank God. Uh, we pray. We I, Listen, I thank God for air conditioner. And listen, I do pray, Melissa, that your air conditioner gets fixed, especially like on a day to like today, 98 degrees. The heat index is going to be well over 100. So let's go to take these things from air conditioner to a lens cover on a camera to a birthday to the seriousness and the gravity of God's judgment that's upon our, not just our nation, but upon our world. And so... It should be with heaviness that we come. It should be with humility. And that's what the Word of God says. So I wanna, I wanna, I'm going to keep prying on that probably for weeks and maybe even hopefully not months. But, you know, we, we have so much going on in our world. So many things going on. So we need to be praying for these things. So let's, let's go to the Lord right now and pray. Uh, Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus. So many concerns, so many cares. I know I just found out this week, I, uh, you know, I, even people that now I know that are in nursing home have, have COVID-19. We're going to see more and more of that. I know as this thing continues to linger on and not go away. And so, God, it's it's real. It's, it's part of what we've got to deal with. It's part of, I believe, your judgment. But, Lord, there's a stirring in my soul that the church has to rise up, and it's not. 
So God, as I preached last night, as we're going to preach in weeks ahead on Sunday nights, we need to pray for the church to return, to not just try to survive this thing, but to thrive, to the, you know, in, in a time where our culture needs the gospel the most, it seems like they are not even interested. And you know what the sad part is, God? We know statistically now, at least in America, the America churches, most churches only have like 10% to 30% of their people coming back and even watching on digital. So God, the church is not being the answer and the church is not rising up in the midst of the judgment where you should be getting our attention, where the church, we should be at our best. And I don't even know what that means right now. So God, my heart's heavy, and with great humility, I come before you. Today, on behalf of the people of God of Lexington Park, but also the people of God at large, Lord, I pray that we will humble ourselves and fall on our faces and seek your face. God, forgive us right now in these uncertain times where some of us are afraid, some of us are uncertain, uh, some of us are defiant, some of us are maybe overly compliant I don't I don't know I mean I'm just I'm I'm just so much on my heart God we don't have the answers we need you we need you so God I pray for these the seriousness in our nation with uh, what's going on with the violence and um, isolated Bruce uh, police brutality but also just everybody questioning everything politics as usual even worse just cutthroat um Racism just growing, just out of control, hatred for one another, lawlessness. Lord, it's a lot. So we, we surrender these things to you. We pray for these things. God, we are a redemptive God because the end of that text says if we do come humbly, if we do seek your face, if we do repent of our evil ways. And right now, whatever that is in the church, just reveal it to us. Lord, repent of not assembling repent of not coming together or not knowing what to do and you know and god show us what to do we we want to get rid of that and lord we repent of the wickedness in our society the 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 abortion the holocaust of the womb we repent of racism we we we, we repent of the tyranny we repent from soji and lgbt doctrine that has now invaded our land we repent of the indoctrination of our sons and daughters of, that are supposed to belong to christ and now belong to this worldly ungodly belief system secularism even worse than that perhaps is just even some demonic activity in my opinion god i know i think you would agree the world may not but lord we, we repent of those things and so we come to you and we know that the promise is you will hear our prayers, that's your people, and then you will forgive our sins, and then you'll begin to heal the land. So God, we pray that prayer. Lord, I do pray for, listen, even in the midst of seriousness of the gravity of that prayer, I know that you care about little things like a lens on a camera, like air conditioner, which with Melissa, that's a big deal right now for us, Lord. <laughs> if we got AC, it's like, okay, I feel for you. So, but Melissa, having air conditioning, just all these things, God, we just surrender to you from the big things to the little things, from the things that may seem so minor. God, you care about every aspect of our lives, and we thank you that we can come to you. There's no other place to turn, and especially in the life in which we find ourselves now. May somehow people of God show interest again in the church and in the gospel, and may people of society and culture be drawn to that we pray this in jesus name amen hey i know that that's some heavy stuff there um i know that if you weren't there last night i know i preached a heavy 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 sermon and i know <laughs> i mean i was very prophetic very very prophet oriented very 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 not um i know i know so but I hope it was well received that we do have the redemption as we go through First Chronicles 7, 14. I just pray for it. It's heavy on my heart. It's going to remain on my heart. For those of you that are, that are part of my church, um, that's just going to remain. So let's get right down to business, and let's get into today's topic. We're still talking. Listen, I think that as us as Christians, a surrendered life has got to be the way forward. We have got to, how are we surrendered to God? And we have to live in that space of surrender. And so... The topics that we've been talking about, they're not, they're not like big sins and things that we just prayed about. 
they're, they're things that just keep us from really being surrendered to the Lord. And so today I want to talk about patience, waiting. Um, in, in Romans 12, verse 12, it says, Rejoice in hope, be patient in affliction, and be persistent in prayer. So look, I, I, a, lo- a lot of us, we're, we're not those things, right? I mean, for, for a lot of us, we, we, may, we may think that we are patient, and we like to be patient, and we pray about being patient, but maybe we're not patient. Um, I know patience is not, um, is not on the top of my list, but the Bible says we are to be patient in affliction. So I started thinking of that text. We're in affliction right now. You and I are in affliction right now. There are things going on in our world that are not pleasant. They're, 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 they're not good. In fact, someone said to me last night, you know, Pastor, as we preach, as we do all these things that we're doing, um, the government's going to know who the good guys are. They're going to know who's preaching the gospel. And you know what? My initial thought is, you're right. Bring it on. The persecution is going to come. I see people writing posts like, have you, have you been out yet? And have you seen, somebody tell me, post it if you have, the signs that say we have a shortage of coinage. And you've been some places where they only take credit cards and debit cards. Have you been there? It's happening. So, so here's some deal. By the way, I've, known, I've heard some people saying prophecy and doomsday and all the stuff about that. Rick, get over it. No. So here's what I want to hear you, Christian, though. We need to be patient. I, I mean, I understand it. First of all, people don't want to handle coinage right now with the virus. Coinage could be a thing of the past. I'd have no idea. Money could be in shortage, all that kind of stuff. The print, we're not printing as much stuff. But you've seen those signs. If you're going to go out, you're going to see them. So the mark of the beast, it's coming, and all this other kind of stuff. Listen, 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 listen. Why are us Christians, we've been waiting for the Lord to come back, right? We're We're waiting. We're, we're, we're supposed to be patient for him to come back. And then when some of these signs start to happen, like potentially, maybe, right? Like we know in Revelation, it sounds like one world currency and mark of the beast and all this. Why are we so quick to fight those things? If they're supposed to happen and they're going to happen anyway, and it's going to be God's hand if we really believe in Revelation, why aren't we just patient and like, hey, God, this could be it. It could be it. Me, me using my credit card and not coinage, why do I need to be in defiance against that? I, you know, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get that. Maybe maybe you do, and maybe you're one of those people, and God bless you. You know, I'm just not going to fight that stuff, right? So um, anyway, I just think right now we need to be waiting for the Lord, and if the Lord's going to come back, there may be affliction, and we be patient in affliction. Now, let's just, now that's big picture, right? That's big picture stuff. Let's look, though, for a moment just at, let's, let's gravitate inward. Let's, let's look at um, the affliction of life itself, right? You know, we, we, see, we see things in our lives where we have to be patient. All of us do, right? I mean, all of us do. In fact, um, during the study, my, my, my aunt wrote and said, I, I have been known to say, God, show me what you want me to learn from this because I want this over. I mean, isn't that how we approach things sometimes? God, I just want to get out of this. Just make it over. This virus, God, just let it be gone. This, this money shortage, this, this mask thing, just let it be gone. And don't get me wrong. I, I don't think God could blame us for wanting those things to be gone. Amen? I mean, who, who wants the mask gone? Me. I'll be the first one to sign up. Who wants, who wants this virus gone? Who wants this violence gone? Who wants just to, can we just not all get along? Right? Who wants abortion gone? Who wants, who wants God to eradicate sexual immorality? Who wants God to stop sex trafficking? All these things, they're, they're all important. And by the way, some of the things we should be persistent in and not patient, we, we should want to end abortion. We should want to end you know, the sinful stuff, right? But we're in the midst of life and affliction. The Bible says, be patient upon the Lord because we trust in God, right? So my aunt's saying, God, show me what you want me to learn from this so it can be over. And there's a true value in that. When we're in a situation of affliction, God, what are you showing me? What am I waiting on? I think that's a beautiful thing, you know? And she goes on to say, you know, looking back, I've seen, um, seen that where he needed me to go and learn, that's why he had me in that time. And it was his directions of waiting, you know, that, that helped her the most. Most times, it's not easy when they're in the midst of 
of tough times. Another friend wrote that, Are you like me when you find the things and situations and people you waited for are the most precious and memorable? Sometimes when we have to wait for something, sometimes when we have to wait on someone, sometimes when we have to pray and persist through something, that's when God is at his best. Now, that's also where we have to be patient. Rejoice in hope, be patient in affliction, and be persistent in prayer. I think there's some truth to, to Romans 12:12 12, 12 there, that we can rejoice in the hope that we have in Jesus Christ, right? We have this hope in Jesus Christ. We can also be patient in the affliction that's upon us, be patient in waiting for God to do something in the midst of these things. And then lastly, we need to be persistent in prayer to God. So may we just realize that God is still in control. We need to wait on him. And in fact, in Isaiah, it says, those who wait upon the Lord, he will renew their strength and give them wings like eagle and they'll soar. So, and you won't faint, you know, I mean, all, so we got to take God at his word when we're in the midst of this, right? So just want you to go back and, and say, listen, God, you got this thing. I'm surrendered to you. I'm patient in you. And I will be patient in the affliction that we're facing right now. Because many of us, listen, we are facing many, many afflictions right now in this world. There's no doubt about it. The church is, is under affliction. The, our lives are under affliction. Our world is under affliction. And we got to be seeing, God, what are we waiting on? How can we see you? And it gets us back to that Second Chronicles that I shared with you earlier. I really believe this. That if my people who are called by their name will humble themselves and seek your face, you know, that you would be, God, you will then, and repent of our wicked ways, you will then hear our prayers, you will then forgive our sins and heal our land. So, you know, I know we all lived in different seasons in life, and we've all seen a lot of things, but I don't think any of us have seen right now what's going on. So in the midst of the judgment of God, and this is my word of encouragement, in the midst of this judgment, Church of Jesus Christ, I don't, I don't even know what this is going to look like, but we have to do it. How can we come back and be a force to reckon with? How can we be the church of Jesus Christ? How can we make a difference in our world? How can our waiting on God in the midst of this to get it over with, right? And, and not, you know, and to, to say, God, just unfold what you're going to unfold. I'm here, right? And to be the church. I don't think God's telling us to wait to come back to church. I don't think God's telling us to stop doing certain things. I think there's a command to worship. There's a command to assemble. And there's power in the assembly. I think the church has lost that right now. And I don't even know how to gain it back. I know statistically, like I told you, most churches, 10 to 30% of what they're seeing back when they come back to worship. And digital worship has plummeted. So the church isn't even interested in the church. And the world's not interested in the church and the gospel. You guys, it's time for us to, to, to take this seriously. The church has got to come back to be the hope that the world needs. And I think God's waiting. Listen, I think the waiting game is almost in reverse. I think God's waiting to see what the church is going to do. Did you just hear what I said? And let me tell you what, the Lord is patient. He is. The Lord is patient. He has not returned because he still wants people to get saved. And I think he's looking at us and saying, what are you going to do? And I'll be honest, as a pastor, I cried this morning. I don't know. God, what do you... What do you want the church to do? I mean, the, we're all, there's nothing drawing. We're not, we're not coming together. We're not, we're not the hands and feet. We're not, we don't even know what we can do and what we can't do. And, and then there's the virus and then there's the violence. And then, you know, there's just so much going on. It's crazy. It's chaotic. So we need to wait on the Lord as in he'll renew our strength. So we need to be connected with him. But I think the Lord's also waiting on us. So that's a little bonus for you there today. So I don't even know, again, it's okay not to have the answers. It's okay not to have this figured out. We're in the midst of this right now. So in the midst of this affliction, we need to wait and say, God, what do you, what do you want from us? We're here. But we can't be like the world. We have to be like Christ. And the, the world needs the gospel and the world needs the church right now. And they're not seeking it. And then the church needs to be the church right now. And we're not. So coming to church 
is about becoming the church. So I want you to hear that. So there's got to be this level of some point in this process, because this virus is not going away. This affliction is not going on. The church has got to find out how to rise up and soar with wings like eagles. Go back to that Isaiah text, right? Those who wait on the Lord will be renewed. They're not going to faint. They're not going to grow weary. And he's going to give them wings like eagles so that they can soar. I don't know when that's going to happen. I don't know how that's going to happen. But Church of Jesus Christ at Lexington Park Baptist Church and the churches that are represented that are watching, the 18 to 20 people or so that are watching right now, whatever church you go to and you belong to, we got to figure out how to soar through this thing. we got to figure out how to be patient on the Lord, but also that the Lord might be being patient with us. Listen, I hope some of that made sense. Again, it's, it's, it's on my heart and heavy. I, I think about this daily. I process this daily. I'm praying about this daily. It is so on my heart. How can we rethink church? How can we rebuild church? How can we redo church? How can we be the church? How, how are we becoming the church that Jesus wants us to be? Because I don't think the digital thing is what God wants forever. I think we did that immediately for public safety, and I think now we got to figure this thing out. So those of you out there, I want you to be praying about that. Pray, 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 pray. What did the scripture say? Rejoice in hope, be patient in affliction, and be persistent in prayer. So I keep praying, God, how do you want us to come back? God, we're waiting. we've waited on you. You're bringing this judgment now. Well, how are we to respond? Rejoice in the hope that I have the gospel, the gospel to go out and tell people about Jesus. But we're not able to do that. We're not going. We're not, we're not participating. The world is in a shutdown. We've got to figure out how do we be the church in the midst of that? How do we take the gospel to the world that doesn't even realize they need it right now? And how, how do we do that? And I think it's praying. And I think it's living out Second Chronicles 7, 14. I think it's doing what this says, rejoicing the hope of the salvation, being patient in all affliction that, that God brings upon us, and being persistent in prayer. Hey, I hope something I've said today just blessed you. I hope something that I've said today will, will resonate in you, uh, and you, you will, uh, you'll take it to heart, and it'll change. But I really want you to listen. If you're part of my church, I want you to really get on this thing. We need to be upping our game. We need to be ready to transition to what God wants us to do and the people he wants us to become and so we can come back and be the church he wants us to be and it needs to look different than it did before so it has to so we have to be patient in that we have to be patient with one another we need to be in prayer and we need to be rejoicing in our hope all those things that that text just said we need to be living out and then this thing let's go let's go do this thing I wore this shirt today let's go let's go do this thing let's get out there and, and do the things that God's called us to do and to be the church in, in a society and in a community that's and in a nation that's under judgment. It's under judgment. There's no doubt about There's no doubt in my mind now this virus has lasted this long. It's not a joke. It's real. And it's here. And it's a judgment of God. I said that last night. I believe it with all of my heart. You look back through scriptures, God does this stuff all the time. We just so happen to be in the midst of it. So we need to start proclaiming that that's, that's okay. So... Now, what, what do we do? God, in the midst of judgment, wants to bring redemption. How do, we, how do we redeem this? How do we return to God? And I think as a church, how do we return to God? How do we confess our sins? How do we come before him? How can we wait on God to make these changes in our lives? How should we be in when we're at home? How should we be spending time with God? How should we be praying now? How should we be assembling now? How should we come together? And we should come together. Listen, do not forsake the assembly of the body of Christ. All these things are going through my mind. How do we do these things, God? How do we do these things? Now that we're four, four, for four months into this, how are we supposed to be that? And how can we change the narrative now, God? Change the narrative now to where it's all about you. How can we change the narrative, God, now to where the world will start, till, till the world will hear the gospel and seek you and know that the church is the answer? The government's not providing the answer. The world's not going to provide the answer. The currency's not going to provide the answer. None of these things. The violence and the demonstrations and the protests, they're not providing the answer. The gospel is the greatest message that Jesus saves. That's what we need to hear right now. And the church needs to be getting together and proclaiming that very message. Hey, you guys. Listen, I want you to stay safe, stay strong. Um, Pray about these things. I think we're in prayer mode, right? That prayer prayer without ceasing last week, the petitioning God with constant prayers because I, God, there's something going on with this. I'm telling you, marinate the sauce that I just said today. Marinate it. I'm on that theme too. I got to go have spaghetti. 
So marinate that. Let that marinate in your heart. And I think you're going to say, Chris is right. These are the things that are going on, the judgments of God, this calling for us to figure out what we're going to do and how we're going to move forward. We've been waiting on the Lord, and now it's been four months, and, and we've been doing our thing. We pivoted. Now, God, what now? And we need to be ready. And I think God's mounting us up, and He is, and we're going to soar. I don't know what it's going to look like, but that's what I'm hoping for. That's what I'm praying for. That's what I'm rejoicing in. It's the hope that I know that the church is the answer, and the gospel is the message that the world needs to hear. And the people of God have got to come back together to do that. We've not done that yet. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I'm waiting on God. I'm patient on God. I hope you will be too. And I hope you're going to be a part of it because I'm telling you, I think it's going to be a great gospel opportunity, a great gospel movement, a great, it's just going to be awesome. I can't wait to see what God's going to do because I don't think God's settling for 10 to 30% of his people worshiping. I don't think God's going to settle for, for, for in the midst of this judgment to people just blow him off. That's not what God wants. And we should not be silent and let that happen. So anyway, uh, I'm preaching, so I'm going to stop now. I just want you to know, um, again, stay safe, stay strong. It's Pastor Chris until tomorrow. God bless you. We'll see you later, okay? You guys take care. And again, uh, just keep praying. Hey, everybody, don't forget, we have a gospel opportunity. In uh, 2020, we made a commitment to take the gospel to the ends of the world. Make sure you're sharing the gospel with somebody. Don't forget about, whoa, word of encouragement weekdays here on PC Studios with Pastor Chris McCombs at facebook.com slash Pastor Chris McCombs. And lastly, worship opportunities. We're going to continue to focus on this. Our digital worship right now continues at 10 a.m. on Sundays at facebook.com slash Lexington Park Baptist. And then the church has left the building. Listen, the church has left the building to assemble. Please join us Sunday nights at 6 p.m. for Grills for Glory. If you want to hang out, social distancing and masks are required at that time. Hang out with each other. Spend time together. uh, You know, and and the fellowship takes place. And then at 7 p.m., for those that want to come to worship and worship the assembly of the body of Christ coming together is for revival in our midst on Sunday nights at 7 p.m., I hope to see you here. So again, digital worship, 10 a.m., outdoor worship, 7 p.m. on Sundays. We will see you then. Hey, remember, God loves you, and so do I. God bless you. Have a great, great day.